When the man, the myth, the legend Bruno Sacco designed the S-Classes of the 1980s and the 1990s, the W126 and the 140, they were some of the best looking sedans on the roads. And I think there still are today. They have this stately, almost bossy presence that attracted presidents, dictators, superstars. However, today, if we look at the Mercedes S-Class, I think it has lost some of that presence. And Bruno Sacco himself, he wasn't entirely happy with the W140 S-Class. And I'm gonna show you what exactly he wanted to change, but couldn't in the side view when we look at that. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna take the modern S-Class and I'm gonna transform it and try to bring back some of that stately presence that we have in the 1980s and the 90s S-Class classes but first of all let's have a look at the front view here and we're going to talk about this design and also what changed this obviously didn't happen overnight so up top we have the w40 here and down here we have the uh, w223 uh, code name for the new s class and you can see that if we look at the front graphics let's focus in on the front graphics of these two first of all let me say that i think the new s class is an absolutely stunning car specifically when you see it out in real life it looks different it looks more more it has more presence in uh, in real life than it has in photos and in videos as well it just looks really good however it doesn't have the same kind of presence that we have right here in the w140 what i love about the w140 is that when i think of mercedes this is the mercedes face for me i grew up with these type of mercedes where you have the clean headlights going in right here and kind of framing the uh, the grill in the front end i love the way this feels like it's overflowing from the hood and then just dripping down like a waterfall and creating this grill in the front end and we have this beautiful chamfer right here going into the headlights of this design very clean and very horizontal and a lot of horizontal and vertical lines in this design which creates this stately feeling as i talked about in the rolls royce video on my second channel now looking at the new mercedes s class we have a little bit of a different approach here it's still a very beautiful design as i said but it feels more organic it doesn't have that same kind of um, it looks more elegant and graceful than rather than confident like the w140 up there and it doesn't look as solid in my opinion or too many uh, curvatures and too many soft surfaces in this design so we have a bit of a simple design for for the headlight graphic it's not too complicated and what I love about the S class compared to for example the the E class and the C class what I love when companies do is that the, the larger the, the car, the, the less uh, stylized it becomes. I've talked about this on this channel a lot of times before as well. And I think they did the same kind of job with the Mercedes S-Class here. You can see that it, it doesn't have a lot of styling to it, but it's still a very clear identity as a Mercedes. Before we continue with the redesign, I'd like to take a minute to thank today's sponsor, Skillshare. I want to encourage you to take some time to explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. And that's exactly what you can do on Skillshare. If you're unfamiliar with Skillshare, it's an online learning community with thousands of classes in a wide range of topics. You find the classes that interest you. From drawing and sketching to business strategy classes that will help you grow professionally and most classes are straight to the point and you can watch them at your own pace to fit your daily routine I've been on the platform for a number of years now both as a teacher and a student I'm a fan of Aaron Draplin's design classes on Skillshare and specifically his new class dirty design with Draplin crusty techniques <laughs> to create truly original work. I've always wanted to improve my graphic design skills. So I do know industrial design, but not graphic design. And his classes give me new angles on how I can work on my thumbnails and also create my business logo. Skillshare expands constantly with new premium classes every week. And the entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. However, here's the coolest part. Since Skillshare is sponsoring this video, they like to offer you, my subscribers, one month of free premium members However, you have to act fast because only the first 1,000 people to use the link or my code will get one month free trial on Skillshare. So go ahead and click the link in the description or use my code on the website Skillshare.com to get your one month of free trial. And with that said, let's get back to the redesign of the Mercedes S-Class. Let's have a look at the rear view before we jump into the side view. I'm going to talk about what it is Bruno Sacco wanted to change in the uh, W140 design, but I guess wasn't allowed to or something. 
something because of some uh, restrictions. And then we're gonna jump in and redesign the new S-Class into more of a W140 vibe. I can't wait to show you that. So here we have the rear view of the uh, W140. I absolutely love the way this looks. I used to have this as a scale model as a kid that I built myself. It was so fun. I remember putting this little piece down here on here. I thought this, uh, this bar here, um, I was pretty confused by why they had this. I haven't seen anything like this up until that point. It looks a lot like the E-Class of the time with these triangular um, taillights right here with the uh, reverse light underneath right here. And we have a clear boot. This is like a box back here. Creates a very tank looking, bossy looking feeling in the rear end of the W140. Now looking at the new S-Class, I think the rear view is the biggest letdown of the new S-Class. Unfortunately, I think they lost the, uh, the, the stately and the bossy feeling of this car. It looks too soft. It doesn't have really a clear ending of the trunk. It goes smoothly from the greenhouse into the trunk and then kind of doesn't really have the confidence to stop the rear end in a proper way, in a, in a very distinct way. I did make a redesign way back when the S, first S-Class came out and I did a couple of small changes to the rear end and that video is right here on the channel if you want to go and check that out. I also think that these taillights, they, they, they lack a little bit of dy dynamic feeling to it. And the reason I say that is, if we take this design and compare it to, for example, this design right here, the triangular shape of this, it's almost like we have the lower piece, the lower corner of the triangle being almost centered in the middle. So it doesn't have a movement in either way and it creates a static looking graphic element in the rear. What I would like to do is to uh, take this triangle, we can still have a triangular shape, but move this corner either this way or this way to create some more dynamic feeling in the rear graphics of the new S-Class. But still, it's a beautiful looking car and I do like the line flow that we have going into the bumper right here and this subtle little uh, diffuser or, or um, housing for the, for the tailpipes down there as well. But it just can't compare with the W140 in my opinion. Now looking at the side view, this is where Bruno Sacco did his masterpiece. He also designed the one of the best, I, one of my favorite designs of all time, which is the R129 Mercedes SL from 1989 to 2001. That was also Bruce, Bruno Sacco's design. You can clearly see that it has a lot of resemblance or, or in, in the graphics specifically to the W140. But just have a look at how boxy this design is. It has clear, sedan proportions with these three boxes that we talk about here on the channel all the time and they are very clearly defined and we also have a lot of horizontal line going from one end to the other without having them curve up or curve down it just makes it look like a solid looking car almost like a tank and comparing it to the new s-class down here Still, beautiful lines, beautiful line flow, but it just doesn't have the same kind of uh, presence or stance like the W140, as I talked about before. We also have this roof line now being very, very organic and very round. Same with the housing for the windows right here. As you can see, a thick C pillar or D pillar. This is A, B, C. Actually, this is probably the D pillar. And looking at the D pillar on the new S-Class, it has this curvature to it. Everything about this car is a curve these days and it doesn't have that uh, geometric features that the W140 had. But that's also part of the time, obviously. In the 80s and the 90s, generally cars were just a lot more boxier and I actually prefer that style and that's why I want to take this S-Class and redesign it into something a little keep some of the curvatures, but just make it a little bossier than what it is right now. So the reason why Bruno Sacco wasn't entirely satisfied with this design is because he wanted the roof line up here to sit a cup, an inch or so lower than what it does. And I totally agree with that. If we were to lower this, just maybe an inch, maybe not even that, but if we were just to lower it a little bit, it's gonna create a lot more dynamic, almost sporty sedan style for the W140 S-Class. And that was the only thing that Bruno Sacco wasn't really 100% satisfied with, was the height of the roof. All right, so let's jump in to the redesign here and let's see if we can make the W223, the current S-Class, make it a bit more bossy. I think bossy is the word that I'm looking for here. That means that I want to take the graphics, the layout of the graphics of the W140 and apply it onto 
the new S-Class and maybe change a little bit of the greenhouse. Still have modern designs, meaning modern curvatures, modern curvatures in the line flow as well, in the shoulder line. But I wanna keep the baseline that we have going right through the doors and into the front, uh, front end and also into the rear bumper. I wanna have that be strictly horizontal, horizontal to create a solid foundation without any curvature on it for the rest of the car to rest upon. And I think that will create more weight in this design and it will also make it look heavier. And that's kind of what we want in an S-Class. We don't want it to necessarily be heavier, but we want it to look heavy because it is after all an S-Class. You can do all the other things, all the small styling features, any styling features that you want in the E-Class and the C-Class, and the smaller, the smaller classes, the A-class as well. But when it comes to the S-class, it needs to have a distinct separation, in my opinion, from the rest of the lineup. And that's what I wanna do here. I want to have, what I, one feature I love about the W140 is the, uh, the, the lower intake in the front end. It stretches across the entire lower part of the front end. So that's what I wanna have in this redesign as well. I want to have the same layout on the graphics that we have on the W140 applied onto this new design. And that that means that we're gonna have to work on the headlights a lot and also the grill because the grill in the current generation it sticks into this lower intake in the front end and we need to separate the two graphics so we have a clear separation between the top part of the graphics and the lower part of the graphics by a proper looking bumper we can create some sort of fl line flow underneath the headlights maybe that go is, goes into this lower part of graphics so we have some connection between the two but overall i want a clear separation between those two graphic features now working on the green house i'm going to square off a little bit of the rear end of this car of the new s-class to be more in line with the uh, 1991 s-class and that means that we're going to have to work on the d-pillar because i think the d-pillar and the rear end as i said is the weakest point of the new s-class it doesn't have the same presence as the 1991 s-class and i want to bring some of that back that means that we're seeing the taillight in this rendering and that means that we're going to have to work on that as well to make it look more like an old school Mercedes taillight and not have this tri triangular taillights that we have on the current S-Class, which I, by the way, I don't mind those taillights. I just wish it, they had a little bit more of a dynamic feeling to them as I talked about when we talked about the rear view. Now, overall, I think Mercedes is doing a fantastic job with their designs at the moment. I do like the new S-Cell, even though it has a little bit of a uh, contradicting graphics in the front end with these super sharp headlights and then every other graphic feature in the front end are very smooth and soft so they kind of clash a little bit but the proportions of it it is really a stunning machine and I can't wait to see that in real life too just like I was waiting to see the S-Class looking at photos and then when you see it out in real life it gives you a completely different vibe or perception when you get to see it out with your own eyes in 3D and here it is this is the end result of my class redesign i think it looks really cool i would love to see something like this out on the road maybe a special model s class that brings back some of that old uh, squareness of the w140 thanks so much for watching and thank you to skillshare again for sponsoring this video make sure you click the link down in the description or use my code to get one month of free trial of skillshare take care and i'll see you in the next video Thank <laughs> you.